Hey, before this video starts, real quick, if you don't know what the SCP Foundation is, or if you missed the previous part of this video, here's a link to the playlist. This video might make more sense watching those first. So, okay, here's the thing. You want some more SCPs? I got some more SCPs! Let's look at some more SCPs. Now, like I said in my last video, due to time constraints and the threat of legal action by my editor and various religious groups, I'm not going very in-depth with any of these SCPs, so if any of them seem interesting to you, go ahead and read the original articles. All of them are linked in the description. As I said last time, the point of these videos is not to give you the entire story, it's to give you quick previews of the SCPs to convince you to read them. Oh, and I forgot to explain this in my last video, so real quick, SCPs have object classes describing how difficult they are to contain. The main three, and the ones used in this video, are these. There's lots of other containment classes and a more complicated version of the basic classification system, but this is already going to be part three of what was originally going to be a single video, so I'm just going to link to the page about object classes and a video about the new classification system in the description. SCP-105 is a girl who has the ability to reach into and manipulate photographs she takes with her Polaroid camera. I'm gonna go a little long on this one because 105 really highlights something I didn't get to talk about in my last video. A pretty major recurring issue with the Foundation's methods. See, the thing is, well, if your goal is just contain all weird stuff at all costs, then you get some, uh, ethical complications. See, SCP-105 didn't do anything wrong, and she doesn't really deserve to be locked up. But the Foundation keeps her locked up anyway. And if you ask why that kind of thing is necessary, you'll get long, rambling explanations, uh, both in-universe and, like, on Reddit, about ethics and the greater good and we die in the dark so that you can live in the light and, well, Really, it's just because the premise of the project is we want to write about a secret anomaly containing organization, and all the justifications for it are just so we can keep writing and enjoying cool weird art. It does make for some really interesting philosophical discussions about the nature of freedom versus safety, though, if you're into that kind of thing. Uh, and speaking of... SCP-5031 is a big six-armed floating murder monster. The interesting part of this one comes from the testing logs, which tell an in-depth story about the researchers studying the monster and the development of their techniques and their relationship to it. This is an excellent example of what I like about the SCP Foundation, where they can take a simple idea and expand it into a genuinely interesting and well-written narrative with a legitimate emotional arc that makes you feel real emotion over what is, on the surface, such a simple, traditional, ooh, what a scary horror monster concept. So, between SCP-105 and SCP-5031, you can see the site has some pretty deep stuff on it. Anyway, SCP-5167 is a possessed game of Among Us. Okay, no, listen, but I swear it's actually unironically really good. No, really. No, listen, I know, the, the title of the article listing is When the Imposter is Sus, but really, it's a legitimately good story if you can just- No, don't click off the video, wait! Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP- Hey! Whoa! Call security, we have a containment breach hey, whoa, in Lab 40. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, hey. You're MMS, right? My apologies. It pays to be a little jumpy in these parts. What brings you to the lab today? Hi, Dr. Sherman from Site42. A big fan. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I just came to try to call back some viewers. They clicked away when I started talking about SCP-5167. Oh, you mean when the imposter is sus. Yeah, that's the one. I really like it, like unironically, but so many people skip over it because it's based on a meme. I know, right? That bothered me as well. What's funny to me is how many of the people who publicly criticized it when it came out clearly didn't even read it first. Have you read the sequel to it? Oh, you mean 5761? It's great, right? So great. The author did an excellent job of taking a very simple story concept and expanding it, giving it stakes of bombastic proportions. Absolutely riveting stuff. Yeah, when I was reading that last interview log, literal chills. Indeed. Anyways, what did you say you came to the lab today for? Uh, right, sorry. Uh, I wanted to ask for my viewers back so I could finish my video. Certainly. Just, uh, 
Be sure to avoid security on your way out. Oh, uh, thanks, but I'm leaving via jump cut, so they won't even know I was here. Hey, everyone, follow Site42 on YouTube and TikTok. He's got a lot of great SCP content. Anyway, thanks again, Dr. Sherman. Cheers. I'll head back to my video now. And we're back! <laughs> So, SCP-5167. SCP-5167 is a manifestation of Phthonus, the ancient Greek anthropomorphic personification of Envy, as a player in the game Among Us. He shows up from time to time in the game, and if you play a match with him, you eventually start to hallucinate that the people around you in real life are imposters. It's all in all a fairly short and simple anomaly for the Foundation, albeit a weirdly specific one, but the really engaging part of the article is at the end where you get to read one of the in-game chat logs from him and get an insight into the character. There's also, as mentioned, a sequel, SCP-5761, which is much, much longer and, like Dr. Sherman said, expands on the original in a really fantastic way. I can't even describe the sequel without spoiling it, so if these sound interesting, then after watching this video, make sure to go read both SCP-5167 and SCP-5761. Anyway, uh, these last few get their appeal from things like extended testing logs and incident reports, so I'm gonna quickly summarize them so you can go and read all the fun stuff yourself. SCP-507 is a guy who randomly warps to alternate dimensions and other universes. His adventures are recorded in a supplementary document. Information on whether or not he has been to a universe where I can get a video done on schedule is currently unknown. SCP-3143 is a fictional noir detective who can turn the world around him into a pseudo-noir story. Read SCP-3043 first to see what I mean. SCP-4000 is the Fair Folk from English folklore, and they can't be referred to by name or they do vaguely described horrible things to you, like turning you into furniture, or pulling all of your bones out through your mouth, or making you spend like an hour and a half designing them for your first SCP video even though they only showed up for like four seconds right at the beginning. And finally, SCP-914 is a giant machine that does things. Wait, what? That's a terrible description. Who wrote this? It's... It's more complicated than that, but, uh, look, just read the article. Anyway, I think that's all the ones I have time for in this video. There's a number of other SCPs I wouldn't mind talking about, so if you'd like more of these severely abridged SCP synopses, then subscribe, ring the bell, and leave a comment telling me you want more. I'm currently going through a bit of an SCP kick, so if people want, it might be fun to do more of these. And hey, like I said last time, if you have a friend who wants to get into SCPs but you don't know what to recommend, toss them a link to these videos. It's always fun to get more people into the stuff that you like. And once again, thanks to Dr. Sherman from Site42 for showing up. He's a super cool dude, and I highly recommend his stuff. His TikTok is very fun, and his reading of SCP-3999 is, in my opinion, the definitive audio adaptation of it. Although I recommend maybe not starting off with 3999, because it's kind of a lot for a newbie. Thank you for watching, and Siren Head is also not an SCP. Stop saying that Siren Head is an SCP. The guy who made him specifically said... Special thanks to my Elder Manticore patrons, Parenthetical Catface and Jameson Kimball. If you'd like your name read aloud during the credits like these fine folks, or animated across the screen like these lovely people, my Patreon is in the description. <laughs>